Hi friends, it's Julie and today I'm here with my February reading wrap up for you guys. February ended up being a pretty good reading month for me. I was able to finish five books and I enjoyed most of them so that is always a plus. But the first book that I read for the month was Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury and this is a very popular classic that I'm sure you've either read or have heard about. But it is set in a future society where books are banned and not only are they banned but books are burned. And the government has decided to ban books because they found they have become problematic, that they cause conflict, that they cause people to have feelings that they don't want to feel or think about things that they don't want to think about. And so the government was just like, we're just going to get rid of all the books and then we don't have to deal with this anymore, which is just absolutely terrifying. But, you know, in the world that we're living in today, it isn't too hard to imagine something like this happening and that is just really scary. Um, overall, I really enjoyed this book. It was super easy to read. I just flew through. It's like 150 pages. And I feel like it's a really important read. You know, it's very thought provoking and I feel like everyone should read it at some point in their life. I will say though that since it is such a quick read, I had a hard time like fully immersing myself into the world and like fully connecting to the characters. So really that was my only criticism of it. I kind of wish it would have been a little bit longer. I understand why it's not and I understand why he wrote it to where it kind of keeps you at a distance from the characters like I understand that but for me I just would have liked for it to have been just a little bit longer but really that's the only criticism that I have of it. Then the second book that I read for the month was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and if you guys watched my currently reading video a couple weeks ago you will know that I didn't love this book. It, I was kind of disappointed. I read Persuasion in January and I really enjoyed it. So I thought I was going to really love this one because this is most people's favorite Austen novel and it just, it isn't mine. I had a really hard time connecting to Elizabeth Bennet. We are just really different women and that's okay. I just, I had a really hard time connecting to her as well as I didn't really like Mr. Darcy. So I had a really hard time getting caught up in the romance in this book and that's one of the main points of it. <sighs> I don't know. It was just it was just a little little disappointing for me. I have heard that I need to go back and watch the movie and then reread the book. So I think in the future I will try that. It's going to be a little while, but I do want to continue on with other Jane Austen novels. So if you have a recommendation for me as to which one I should read next, please leave that down below because I've only read these two so far and I want to continue on with her work. I just I don't really know where to go from here. Then the third book that I finished for the month was the book of the unnamed midwife by Meg Ellison and this was an ebook that I got from NetGalley and I really really enjoyed it. It's a dystopian novel about a flu pandemic that takes place and like wipes out like 98-99% of the population and it kills more women than did men. So there are very few survivors left on the planet but now it's really rare to be a woman and our main character in this novel is a woman and she survives the flu and kind of makes her way out into the world and you know obviously society has now collapsed and she's not really sure what to do or where to go from here. She meets a lot of not so great people along her journey although eventually she does find some nice people but you know she discovers really early on that it's no longer safe to be a woman really in this new world and all the women that she finds and comes into contact with while well, most of them are being treated really really poorly and you know there is some hard to read subject matter in this book there is a lot of rape of women and girls of all ages women are being traded for goods like slaves at some points in this book and it was just it was hard to read at times but I also really enjoyed her writing style though it was really gritty and raw and I really enjoyed that type of writing and so this book was definitely like right up my alley. I can understand how it wouldn't be for everybody, but it definitely was for me. This has become one of my favorite dystopians that I think I've ever read. And I will definitely pick up more Meg Ellison. I actually think that she is writing a sequel to this book, or she has written it. I think I saw it on NetGalley, but I, um, I didn't request a copy yet. But I will definitely be checking it out when it becomes available because I really, I really enjoyed it. 
Then the fourth book I finished for the month was The Girl in 60 by A.R. Tour, and I bet he read this book with Rachel from The Shades of Orange, and I will link to her channel in case you haven't checked her out yet. She is so fantastic. She's one of my favorites. She reads a lot of mysteries and thrillers, which you guys know that I love, and she does the best review videos. I always love her reviews, so definitely go and check her out if you haven't already. But this is an erotic thriller, and all I think you really need to know about this book is that the main character is a cam girl with sociopathic urges. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all you really need to know to pick up this book. Well, that and there is very, very explicit sexual content in this book. So if that is something that bothers you, then definitely don't pick this up. But I think that's kind of assumed because the main character is a cam girl, but just throwing that out there. Um, this book moves so so quickly. There's a mystery in this that isn't super twisty, but I was sucked into this book and we just flew through it. We read it in just a couple days. I just was really, really in the mood for a book like this. I think it would be perfect for like a readathon or a reading slump just because the book moves so quickly. I will say the writing isn't super fantastic and the mystery isn't super twisty, but I still found it. I still found it really enjoyable. So if it sounds like something that you might like, definitely, definitely give it a try. I do think this is part of a series, and I don't think I'll be continuing on with that unless somebody can convince me down below. Otherwise, I just don't have a really strong urge to pick up the next book just because the writing wasn't fantastic, and she introduced kind of a romance at the end of this book, which I just thought was, was just kind of weird. But if they get really good... Please leave me a comment down below and let me know and I might pick up the next one. And then the fifth and final book I read for the month was The Long Way to a Small and Great Planet by Becky Chambers and this was hands down my favorite read of the month. It's become one of my favorite books of all time. I just, I absolutely loved it. So this is a very character driven sci-fi novel about crew members on a spaceship that punch holes in space. Like they create these hyperspace tunnels so that ships can travel longer distances and shorter amounts of time like between planets and galaxies and things like that and it's the crew members on the ship that make this book so special they are all so unique and diverse there are different species of aliens and there's humans and they all have different backstories and different cultures and oh, they were just so fantastic becky chambers writing is just is just amazing. I have not fallen in love with a group of characters like this in such a long time. And my favorite character was definitely Sissix. I just, I really connected with her. She had certain personality traits that just really resonated with me. And she was definitely my favorite, although I did love all of them in their own way. So I definitely recommend picking up this book if you enjoy a really good character story. But even though it's a really character driven, it was never slow. There were never any really slow parts or dry parts. I thought it read really quickly. And don't be turned off because it's sci-fi if you don't read a lot of sci-fi because to be honest, I didn't think like the science elements in this book were any harder to read and understand than say like in The Martian and everyone seemed to read The Martian. So just because it's sci-fi, don't be scared off because I don't even read a lot of sci-fi, but maybe I should start because I really loved this. And I can't wait to pick up a closed in common orbit very, very soon. But those are all the books that I read throughout the month of February. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know if you read anything great in February or if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. But I think that is it for the day, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again very soon. Happy reading. Bye.